Let's use a simple example to illustrate how to develop a network diagram. Well, let's say I want to clean up my yard. So the project will be titled Yard Project. Before I can create a network diagram to schedule the work, I have to first complete a work breakdown structure because that's the basis for my network diagram. So here on the screen, you can see my work breakdown structure for my yard project. So the tasks involved with my yard project are pre and post cleanup, cutting the lawn, doing the trim work, getting the equipment prepared, and hedge trimming. Now notice I didn't put these tasks in any kind of order. I just listed the tasks that need to be done because sequencing is not the function of the work breakdown structure. Okay, so under the pre and post cleanup, what do I have to do? I might have to pick up the trash and that might take me 15 minutes. I've got to bag the grass when I'm done cutting it. That might be 30 minutes. I've got to pick up the hedge clippings, 15 minutes, and then I got to haul all this to the dump and that's going to take me about 45 minutes. Well, what about cutting the lawn? Well, I've got to mow the front lawn and I've got to mow the back lawn. Well, the front lawn might take me 45 minutes and the back lawn only takes me 30 minutes. Now I go and I break down the trimming. I've got to trim the weeds around all the trees. That'll take about 30 minutes. And then I need to edge around the sidewalk. I have allocated 15 minutes for that. Well, to get my equipment ready to use, I need to gas it up. That'll take me five minutes. And then I need to find the hedge trimmer and get it out. That might take me another five minutes. And then under hedge trimming, there's really nothing to break down other than trim the hedges. So I just have a time there of 30 minutes. So that's what our work breakdown structure might look like for our yard project. Well, now to the network diagram. The first step is to decide what can be done first. And sometimes it's possible to start several different tasks at the same time. So if that's the case, you'll simply draw them side by side and start working from there. So looking at our work breakdown structure, we see that we're going to have to do some pre-cleanup before we can get on with the, the actual mowing of the lawn, and we have to do some equipment preparation. So th these two tasks are gonna be part of the first things that we do. So in there, we see that we've gotta pick up the trash first. We've also gotta gas up our equipment, and then we need to get our hedge trimmer out. So these are the first three tasks or subtasks that we can do, and we can do them in parallel. So I list these here side by side on my activity on node network diagram. And this is ultimately going to determine our critical path. So I've called this the critical path diagram, but it's also our activity on node network diagram. Well, these boxes that I have here might look a little strange to you. So let me explain what this information means. In each of these boxes, we have some abbreviations. The DU stands for duration. That's how long in minutes or how long in hours or how long in weeks, whatever your scheduling time frame is, that's what goes here. So in our case, our duration for each task is in minutes. So DU stands for duration. ES stands for our early start. LS stands for late start. EF stands for early finish. And LF is late finish. And then in the middle here, we list the task or the activity. And that's what goes right here. We'll go over this in more detail in the next lesson. We can look at this project as having three phases. There's the preparation phase, the execution phase, and the cleanup phase. The preparation phase involves picking up the trash, putting gas in the equipment, and getting out the hedge clipper. In between the preparation and cleanup is where the bulk of the work is performed, and that would be the execution phase. During this phase in my example, I would mow the front lawn and the back lawn, I would trim the weeds, edge the lawn, and trim the hedge. The cleanup phase involves bagging the grass, bundling the trash, and then hauling the trash to the dump. In putting this diagram together, I followed a rule of scheduling which says that we should diagram what is logically possible and then deal with resource limitations. I scheduled this project as if I had help and wasn't working alone. Because if you'll remember what I said earlier, managing a project where you're the only participant isn't project management at all. So for planning your projects at work, 
You should plan them as if you have the necessary help and then worry about resource limitations later. Another rule to keep in mind is that all of your times should be in the same increments. For example, you don't want to mix hours and minutes. In our example, I've scheduled everything in minutes, and this is just to prevent confusion. Once it's all diagrammed out, I can add up all of the minutes and then convert it to hours to get a total time for this project. You should also keep in mind that when making your time estimates, you should have a specific person in mind. For example, if my teenage son is working with me for this project, he might not work as fast as I do, or he may work faster. In any case, your estimates will be more accurate if you know who will be doing the job when you do your estimate.